What's up everybody, so today I'm going to make a video on how to do an electric fan conversion on our old crap boxes. Um, this could really be done for any vehicle, but so I'm just going to go through the process that I do whenever I do anything on the car. I always come to my little whiteboard and kind of write everything out, that way I'm not guessing as I go, I've already pre-worked it out. So we got a few categories here. We got the fan, we have zap attack, which is all of the electrical information. Uh, current wise, you got the thermostat. This is something different, but we'll get to that in another video. And then we have the wiring route, as well as a diagram of what you're gonna be doing before you do it. And a big note here is to avoid hand toggles because man is equal to stupid. Um, at some point in time, you, you may forget to turn on the fan if you had been off of, a, off of a switch, or maybe a switch just has it on direct, so now you're using your fan even when you don't need to, so on and so forth. So if you can, avoid a freaking switch. You don't need a switch. You can do it without a switch. And then right here is a little star section. We'll get to that at the end. As you can see, there's a few things that are starred. So starting with the fan. First of all, you want to take note of how many CFMs, how much CFM your stock fan pushes. In our case, it's around eight to nine hundred ish CFM. Uh, you always want to be above that. So every time they give you a CFM number on the fan, um, sometimes they'll give you two, sometimes they won't. One is the what I call the Bernoulli's thing, which is ideal flow. Uh, that's neglecting friction of air, parts touching in each other, the magnets inside the motor, etc. So that's 1250 CFM. In real life, I always subtract 200 just because I want the worst possible scenario of CFM. So that cuts it down to 1050. So the CFM here expected is around 1150 because of course it's not going to be a reduction of 200. Uh, that's ridiculous. That's like you're flowing water or something. So the effective range of what your, my fan that I've chosen for this situation will run is around 1050 to 1150 CFM. Moving on to zap attack, this is all the wiring. So your kick on uh, amperage is gonna be different from your steady amperage. And here's what I mean by that. So your kick on, since you're starting from a standstill, you're overcoming inertia of the fan, basically the weight of it. So you're always gonna have a little more draw than what you will when it's already running. So Right here, the kick on, I have at 15 amps. So the max amperage of a relay I want to use is probably around 20 at uh, 15 or at 12 volts, which we have right here. Um, steady, this will always be listed on the box. Um, steady, high, low, it's all 11.5 amps. I always put tested because that's what's written on the box. That's what they've done. Here, you're gonna choose where you want your thermostat to kick on. I have a little star by that. We'll get to those later. But I chose 170 degrees. Um, here's the amp that, or amp, the relay I want to use. Here's the gauge wiring I'd like to use, and here's the fuse I'd like to use. Always try to match the fuse with the relay. You don't want to overpower your lines and screw everything up. And always wire these in junction with what's recommended on the box for the fan. Over here we get to the thermostat. I have it at 160 degrees is when it opens, and uh, I do this because my motor's not stock. Um, I do use uh, AC in mine, so maybe I want a little more cooling capacity, more of a window. And uh, usually with the more power adders you have, the more hotter of a combustion you're running, so it's going to be a hotter engine, so you want to cool it down a little more. Just be careful with this, don't run it cold ridiculously, uh, like without a thermostat. Here's the wiring route. Always want to plan out your wiring beforehand. As you can see here, I've matched all the colors. I have the wiring going to the fan in the middle, off the shroud, off to the, therm the little probe that should be on the radiator, to the wiring controller, or the fan controller, and then to the relay. Here's what I do. Tuck it, keep it neat, keep it clean, probe under the shroud, that way nobody can see it. The fan loom over the shroud, so you don't want the little wire going into the fan, obviously. Um, reconnect at three, so this is where three is for me. And that way it all looks nice and neat, have it tucked, that way you don't see wiring all over the place. Control under the battery. That's the controller. If you put it underneath the battery tray on our E7 chassis, or maybe even the AE chassis as well, anything that's the battery right in this area on this side of the radiator, you won't see the wiring. So you can be able to tuck it nice and easily. 
control the battery, of course. Snakeskin wiring shield. Don't use that weird plastic crimp rack. Uh, just get some snakeskin. It looks a lot nicer. It's a lot more heat resistant, and uh, it's easier to wrap, in my opinion. Here's the drawing of the shroud. I didn't buy a shroud. I actually made one. So I've already done all of this. I just haven't installed it yet. But um, if you have a keen eye from the beginning of the video, you're looking at this, you may see something wrong. 12.25 inches is our overall height. 23 is the length, but you can't have a fan of radius 7. That means the diameter is 14 and it wouldn't fit here. I did this on purpose, that way you know, okay, if I have my measurements, don't go over it because it's not going to work right. Um, you, if you want to make your own like I did, you can literally go to any scrap shop, just get some aluminum. Uh, sheet is always preferred. Uh, make a break, There's literally two pieces of wood, some clamps and a hammer, hammer it out. Once you get the ends, you can actually solder them out. As you can see here, I have a predetermined height that I want off from this off of the radiator, which would be the overall width of it. I'm going into the board, uh, and of course a solder, you don't really need to weld any of that. Um, so here is the stars. So the stars uh, are associated with 10 degrees of freedom. Now the 10 degrees of freedom is when he opens and when he kicks on. They're never always at the same because then you're going to have them fighting each other. With the 10 degrees of freedom, you have 10 degrees where you're going to have uh, free power essentially. So the engine will be cooling but you don't necessarily need to use the fan. Uh, where is this useful? When it's raining, when it's cold outside, if you save power, uh, if you have an oil cooler, that can literally help you out. And this is the OE temp, but in this situation, you should be fine.